So let's do an example calculation for calcium chloride. So this is calcium chloride. That's the chemical formula and the name is calcium chloride. And let's say you had saw that seen that the dominant color was um, equivalent to a wavelength of 600 and let's say 20 nanometers. Now you're not going to have that, so this is an example. Okay, this is an example wavelength. Um, you're going to choose the dominant color and equivalent wavelengths from the table in your lab procedure. But I chose this number um, because I want to show you what happens when you have that zero, uh, which indicates that this number value has only two sig figs, okay, because that zero is not significant uh, without a decimal. So you have 200 and, uh, 620 nanometers. So we first want to start with the wavelength into meters. So this means a conversion of nanometers to meters, uh, which means that you need to set up a metric prefix for nano. So nano metric prefix is 10 to the negative 9. You want to make it in nanometers by multiplying m on both sides, and m equals 10 to the minus 9m. Put a 1 in the front, and that's going to be your conversion factor to convert 620 nanometers uh, to meters. So on the bottom of this, uh, you're going to need to put this 1nm so that nanometers will cancel out. And then on the top, what it's equal to, which is the other side of this, 10 to the minus 9 meters. So this is going to be 620 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That's what we're trying to get to. And then we want to put this into scientific notation. So this is going to be uh, moving this decimal, putting the decimal here, and then moving it over to, to 6.2. And notice that this was two sig figs, so I'm keeping this answer with two sig figs not adding a zero to the end. If I added a zero to the end of this, it would be three sig figs because of the decimal. You want to keep it two. So this is a uh, number getting, getting smaller. The exponent needs to get bigger, but when you're in the negative exponents, getting bigger means closer to zero. Okay, so that's 6.2 times 10 to the minus 7 meters in scientific notation. Now to convert this to frequency, so let's add some uh, symbols. So this is wavelength, and wavelength is the symbol lambda. That's the upside down y. That's called lambda, the Greek alphabet. And so let's make this equal to the symbol lambda. That's what meters are the units for wavelength. Meters for length, and this is the symbol for wavelength. Okay. So this is uh, frequency. We want not the word frequency, but the symbol frequency, which is this symbol. This is a Greek symbol nu. It's a like, cursive v. Okay. The units for frequency are in s minus 1, or 1 over s, or just per second. So uh, when we're looking for an equation, we need to find an equation that has the symbols for this that we have the known value, and the unknown that we're trying to solve for. We need an equation with this lambda and with this nu. So the equation that has both of those is C equals lambda times nu, or wavelength times frequency. So in order to solve for frequency, we first need to isolate for frequency the unknown, the thing we're trying to solve for. So isolating for frequency, this is this symbol. I'm going to rearrange this equation so that this is by itself on one side of the equal sign. The way to do that is to divide both sides. Okay, So this means that this will cancel out. You'll have frequency nu is equal to c over lambda, c over wavelength. So now, once this is isolated, it's by itself on one side of the equal sign, the thing you're trying to solve for, the unknown, by itself on one side of the equal sign. Now you can use this equation. So this is c over wavelength. c is the constant for the speed of light. So you can fill that in. It's 3, um, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters over seconds. It's important to have the units meters over seconds because I'm going to cancel those first. Then you have this wavelength that we just solved for. You're going to want to use this 6.2 times 10 to the minus second. 
instead of, uh, and with the units meters, you're going to want to use this 6.2 times 10 to the minus second instead of 620 nanometers because this nano won't cancel out with the meters. Okay, so let's get a different color to cancel out units. So this meters per second is a fraction inside of a fraction. So let me show you how that works when you have meters over seconds over meters. This is the denominator moves down. So this is the fraction inside of a fraction. You want to make one fraction. Denominators move. Okay, this is in the top, so it moves to the bottom and it's no longer up there. So now you have meters over meters. Um, so the meters and meters will cancel out and you'll have just the units of nothing or one over seconds. You can always put a one in or take a one out. So what that means is that the units are one over s, okay, which is the units of frequency. So only after I've determined that the units are correct do I go to the calculator or even think about any numbers. That's important because oftentimes people don't isolate the unknown correctly. That's this step. When you isolate the unknown, sometimes people multiply the, the wavelength or multiply the wavelength on only on one side, and you'll find that out in dealing with the units first. So the units have to cancel first. So it's a, a, a good rule of thumb to cancel units before the calculator. So now you've got the um, exponents I like to deal with next. So this 10 to the 8th and 10 to the minus 2nd, I'll pull out over here. 10 to the 8th over 10 to the minus 7, I should say. So this is dividing. So this is going to be 8 minus minus 7, or 8 plus 7, which is 15, which means this is going to be 10 to the 15 power. So this is going to be turning back to, to blue here. Is This is times 10 to the 15. So the only thing I need the calculator for is this 3 divided by 6.2. So this is the coefficients, the 3.0 and the 6.2. So 3 divided by 6.2 is 0 0.4838708968. Yes, write all those numbers down because we're not at the final answer. Um, we got to put this into scientific notation and um, then we'll round. So let's put it in scientific notation first and then round it. It doesn't necessarily matter if you round it first or put it into scientific notation first, but you want to write down the whole number from the calculator before you do anything. Okay, so I'm going to put this into scientific notation first. This is going to be 4.83870968, and this is a number that the coefficient got bigger, so the exponent has to get smaller. 15 goes down to 14. Positive numbers are easy. So we want two sig figs in the answer because our original number had those two sig figs. So this is going to be 4.8 times 10 to the 14, 1 over s. You could rewrite that, 4.8 times 10 to the 14, s minus 1. Okay, And then this is the number value, which is equivalent to this symbol. The symbol is useful because in moving on to the next solving for energy, Energy, the units are in J, which are joules. Energy is the symbol E. Okay, We want to look for an equation that has energy in it. And you'll find that the only equation, there's only two, but the equation that has E and the symbol for frequency is H times frequency, H times nu. You're not going to find an equation, at least not the two that I gave you, that have energy and wavelength in it. Okay, so the thing we're trying to solve for this time is energy. This is E. This is already isolated. It's already by itself on one side of the equal sign. So that means we can use the equation to solve for energy, or E. So this is H times frequency. H is Planck's constant, so you just have to look that up. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds and then plug in this number value for frequency. Now, uh, I'm not actually going to take 4.8 times 10 to the 14. I'm going to take that big long number because it's still in my calculator. So I'm going to take that 4838780968 times 10 to the 15. Take all of it. Move it down here. 
um, 1 over s. So why did I take that long number? Um, it's because I don't want to round the answer until it's the final answer. This was the final answer for this step here, but this is now a new final answer for this step. So every time you round, your number becomes less precise, less accurate. So if you can at, at any time not be less precise by taking an earlier number, then that's the goal. Okay, so this is going to be looking at the units first. Um, we have this seconds in the denominator cancels out with that seconds in the numerator. So the only thing left is j times 1 or just j. Because remember, 1s you can always get rid of. So this is equal to the units, which are j, leaving space for the number. That's good because those are the units for energy. So once the units check out, you can go to the calculator. I'm actually not having to go to the calculator yet because I'm looking at the powers of 10. So this is 10 to the negative 34 times 10 to the 15. This time they're being added because they're being multiplied. The fractions are multiplying. So negative 34 plus 15 is going to give us the power of 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so that's 10, negative 19. So let's write that down. We've got the power of 10, 10 to the negative 19. So this is now the only thing we have to deal with is multiplying 6.63 times this number that was already in my calculator. So this is going to be, oops, let's put this into your calculator. This is 6.63 multiplied by the number that was already there. And this is 3.20806415. Okay, so that again was 3 divided by 2.6, gave me, gave me this number. And then I took this number and I multiplied it by 6.63. Okay, so now you have a number that we want to put into scientific notation. It's already in scientific notation because it's already 3.2. So we can take this now and uh, round this to two sig figs. So that's going to be 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And that would be your answer.